Hello, I'm George Hayes and welcome to another tutorial on SDL 2.0. In this tutorial we'll be covering pixel manipulation of a surface access into pixels on a surface, rendering the surface, resizing the screen, and saving the image onto a PNG. What you see before us is a image that is produced by the program currently is uh, based on a height map and that's what I'm using to test the saving to the surface. This, or displaying the surface and rendering it to the an image file and so on. All right, so we're going to go ahead and close that down for now and this. And if you look, remember back or looked at the tutorial that displayed the car and the um, track map as far as up onto the screen. There's a few changes to that basically that goes on actually. If a little bit more than a few but not something too excessive you can download this actual file or project from off my website and uh, just go from that if you want to go through it or you can try and enter it all in so I'm going to go ahead and step through the changes on it if we look into the includes there's no changes in game.h we've removed the uh, car texture and the map the track texture and we've replaced the endless for the rectangles for them and we replaced them with map and rect angle for map all right uh, the only we've also taken out the parts as far as for car and track here as far as it's nullifying the setting it to null as far as the pointer on it. okay there's no changes as far as with uh, on initialization for setting up the window load content there's quite a few we'll go through that in a second on event we have a little bit of code added in here for dealing with resizing the screen there's no changes to on loop on render we've gotten rid of the stuff for the track in the car and we put in map here instead and then of course we cleaned up as far as mapping not the car and the track okay as far as load content we have uh, where we're creating a width and height variable as far as up here we're going to create the mask for surface that we're going to be dealing with to start with the you know, red, green, blue, and alpha mask and this is for dealing with the different byte order and the mask form okay now don't get this confused and think that when you go to manipulate the um, integer value as far as for the color that this here will be the red mask, this will be the green and the blue and the alpha it doesn't work that way and I have it marked down below to show you alright so first we're going to create an SDL surface which is fairly simple then we actually set the size of that surface we we'll create a pointer to the surface sorry, then actually created the surface and we set the mass and so forth for it and this is the width and height of it and it's the 32 colors and so on and as you can see the unsigned it as far as on the front alright so then I just have a display in that what the width and height is on those so alright then we're gonna go as far as creating a map and we'll step into this next part here in a second basically the map here is where the actual data for the height map is created and that's down to here alright I'll step through that in a bit then we're gonna copy that data into the surface through here all right now the actual part that does the copying is this here where the color is copied into it now what we did to make it simply as accessible as this as you can see up here in surface uh, the structure of it there's a set of pixels that goes as far as you know on it that's an array and some void array so we assigned as far as an integer pointer to it and addressed it as far as that and set that address to the pixels here therefore we can access it down here this way alright this is a single long array so we have to compensate by multiplying y times 2048 for the width and then adding x to it to get to the xy value correct xy value position on it when displaying okay all this part here is is uh, for setting the color of this map to the appropriate color for the height that's all that is you know just to give a better visual representation of what's going on alright there is 
where we check for if the surface needs to be locked and we lock it if it needs to be all right and if the surface is needed to be locked and we're done with it we unlock the surface all right so map here is the actual texture that is going to be displayed as far as onto the render all right and we're going to create that from the surface and you have to put in the render its name and the surface that's going to all right then we do a query to get the width and height of it all right which was filled back up in the, front, in the top up there all right then here we d we're actually just going to ignore this part primarily for now because we can use it for other stuff but we grab the width and the height of the window size and we drop it into here as far as to set the si um, size of the rectangle for the map to where we're going to copy it to as far as the size All right. this line right here is how we're saving it as far as to the hard drive you know in this case it's going to actually save into the folder that we are you know running the program from or you know the where we have the game program code in at this point so it saves it to here as you can see all right now after that we Clear up the surface, get rid of it, and then delete the map data from back up here because no sense of filling up our memory and just leaving it there. All right. The on event, uh, real simple. We look for event resize. All right. And if we see the event resize, we get the render output size and we've passed into it the rectangle width and height of the map so that it can be directly manipulated and it then comes back out as far as on it and corrects it all right now if you want to sit there and do this um, for multiple things to change you're wanting to should actually sit there and create like a integer of w and h up here and then just pass it into all of them or you know set up a resize function for handling that stuff all right, on loop has nothing in it, and then of course we clear up, uh, display the map here as far as on it, and we clean it up back here. Now we're gonna jump back into here a bit, and I was telling you as far as color, the color um, when you look at it says is actually your alpha, blue, green, and red. It is not the same as the mask up here on this. All right. Yeah, it might be if you're using this but we're using big engine in here and so there's a difference in it and if you do reverse that mask you'll find it changes down here as well okay and we'll go ahead and run this real quick so you can see there's what comes out this time and I'm going to close it back and we'll do a simple change in here and go slash slash color equals all right and of course this is going to set it to red I'm going to build it real quick run oops did I commented it out sorry my bad That's what you get when you rush. All right, obviously, so there's the red. And I'll go ahead and put this back in here for you. And if you want to just leave it there. So there's as far as how you manipulate as far as putting your pixels into it or color into it. If you want to get the color out, for example, you could do, you know, just literally the opposite of this case. and you'd be able to retrieve the color from it and you could create a function for it and doing it that way all right so that covers that uh, if you're interested as far as in the map thing this is basically a simple tessellation um, 
it actually creates a 2049 by 2049 map instead of a 2048 because divisions by half makes the changes in it. Um, let's see if I can access what I'm looking for here. So basically, I start off with a square, all right, with four points on it, and then I cut them in four, and then we go back and cut each of them. Sorry. Cut each of those again and you get something about like that and it goes out to 2049 because the vertices as far as in here are 2049 but there ends up being 2048 boxes or squares. So basically what I do is I take the average of each of these uh, points as far as the vertices on here and I count it for one box and that's why I actually transfer into the thing granted I could be a little more lazy and just take the first one of each and go down through it and so if you're wondering why there's 2049 versus 2048 and there's some change in values uh, inside the code in here for example as far as like this 2048 2048 but it counts up 2048 from zero so that's 2049 now, when you get down into here, it looks a little more convoluted because you got a map going to 2049, but you got this only going to 2048. Well, that's because you still have to account for the 49th you know, pixel on it because if you don't, you end up uh, not including that one, and then you end up having your map cut across in a diagonal line going from one corner to the other and yeah I know from experience because I made the mistake because I was rushing through it at the beginning and <laughs> slightly embarrassing but anyway so all the, like I said all this does is once it's created the uh, height values as far as in here um, it then sits there and color you know just gives it signs of color to the height value you know and it's not a great map it's just something to sit there as far as for testing in this I plan on using a bit more complex system for another project I'm working on um, but that's pretty much where this actually goes for the values as far as if you're looking at it what's A is this um, the center point top middle right middle right bottom middle and then the left hand side middle and the TL, TR, BL and BR I think you can figure it out just top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right so okay and I think that for the most part covers this on here you know the rest of it is pretty self explanatory where it you know, sets things to zero and set some initial values for his four, four corners um, but the points that you're looking for as far as the texture map and so forth like that is you know there and run it again clear it out I didn't rebuild right there okay so anyway we can see the screen resize as far as on here and pretty simple Alright, so thank you for listening. Hope you find this tutorial useful and have a great day.